The Kurgan's Helmet. I've been waiting forever to do this one. Hi there, I'm Fat from Fat Ironworks. Welcome to today's video. Um, so, as I said, I'm making the helmet from the Highlander movie, uh, 85, 86, I don't know. Anyway, um, the Kurgan had this really awesome helmet, um, which uh, I'm sure Eric will now show us some cuts from the movie here uh, so you get to see it. Anyway, what I went and did was a plasticine sculpture of just getting the basic shape here. So I've roughed out um, the basic landmarks of this thing here and I did it on a little plastic cop's helmet, a little kid's helmet. I just wanted something that was small enough to fit onto my head that this will be about the right size and proportion. So you can see what I've got here. And then the cheek plate here, which is the lower jaw section, goes in there somewhere like that. Uh huh. So we're going to be doing this out of silicon bronze. And first, of all, what I need to do is get some templates. Uh, I've decided for the, the helmet portion here, I'm going to do this in quadrants for pieces. Um, I'm trying to get a shape that I can still put onto my pitch board to, to do the details. Just hang on a second here. Okay, so if you have not watched my video on doing this Rapouche skull out of silicone bronze, then shame on you, you really need to go back, watch that video. But this is essentially what I'm, I'm doing, the process that I will be doing to get my detail into this. Uh, so first off, I'm going to have to rough out some shapes and then I would like to get my pieces of bronze enough that I can have an edge on there that I can clamp it down to my pitch board to do the fine detail. But that is much later in the process. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, we start with a template. Um, and I roughed out just like that. Pretty vague shape, but you can see I'm coming down, capturing this whole area here, and I'm coming back to this, which juts out the highest. So I'm trying to kind of give myself the flattest quadrants I can, if that makes any sense. So um, we will achieve this um, deep depth by putting the two pieces together. Uh, other piece, I also did this piece here. So this will be the corresponding piece for the back and then this will come around and create that entire back. So pretty vague shapes, leaving myself a lot of um, over slop there so I have something that I can refine down to. So now let's transfer these to the bronze sheet, cut them out and we will begin. All right, so step one is raising this into a domed shape. Um, you can see you got very vague cut out here and I left it all jaggy, I don't care because these edges are gonna be trimmed and, um, and I'm not really working with my bare hands here so I'm, I'm leaving all that dangerous stuff there. Um, what I've done is just went over to my stump and just put a rough dish in there just to start the whole thing and that just gets me started on the ball. Now I'm gonna be working this thing hot and raising it into position. Um, and, and we just need to dome out my four shapes and then from there we can uh, refine, well you'll see. Now this appears to be very awkward and non-effective, but um, just bear with me, you'll see this is a much nicer way than doing it, like dishing it cold and then trying to make it work. When you're dishing it, you're stretching out. When you're raising it, we're actually shrinking the perimeter down, which is what we need to accomplish. If you're a regular viewer, you've heard me and watched me do this uh, process before. Um, what I'm doing is hitting like this. So I'm not hitting on the ball, I'm not pinching the bronze in between there, which is going to put um, 
weak points in it, thin it out. What I'm doing is coaxing the bronze in a, a different direction. So I've got leverage on it and I'm coaxing it down towards the ball. But I don't want to hear any steel on steel when I'm doing that, that's thinning out my material. All right, that's pass number two. It's not anywhere in the right um, specific shape, but I've got depth now. Now I can use that to start um, roughing that into shape. Uh, I just want to rough out some of the other um, pieces, get them raised up, and then once we've got the four pieces, I'm going to start refining our shape. All right, so we've got our four quadrants um, domed out, and then you see if I just throw them up here sure what the orientation on them is something like something like that um, so obviously not not to shape but this gives me I'm now in the ballpark for um, approaching the shapes that I want to so let's start with this one looks pretty cool so let's go with that one All right, so I've roughed out my four pieces, and you can see uh, that st starting to take shape. Not doesn't look like much. I know you're thinking, whoa, that's pretty rough and ugly. But uh, trust me, I am a professional, so this is going to get better. Now I've got the shape basically established from here. Um, what I'm going to do is now take these pieces and anneal them, go back into the forge, anneal them, soften them up. They've worked hardened from just roughing them into this condition you can see I've got all my pieces here so I'm gonna get these all annealed and then what I need to do is start transcribing some sharpie lines onto them more specifically where the actual landmarks are and then back to the stakes so this is a, a long process all right so I've got my four pieces annealed now I'm gonna dive into one of them and start uh, what I need to do is transcribe the landmarks with more precision this time and start working on that. So I don't know, your perspective is upside down to mine. Uh, forgive me for that, but you get the idea. So this is the quadrant that I'm working in. And here is my piece. So now I'm just going to start picking arbitrarily. I've got to get that. That is my most pronounced part here along with this one so i want to get that one all right so what i did was just um plotted out actual points um based off my maquette there and then join connect the dots so to speak um so that gives me the eye i always start with the center of and typically the highest point start um getting your detail like that and then pushing out. You don't want to draw in the rest of it because um, as you start working that distortion is going to happen and, and things are going to move somewhat. So start with this, sharpen that up and then I will radiate out towards the edges.
All right, so I uh, established the eye there and then radiated out to some of the other landmarks. Still very rough. Uh, you can see my whole approach to this is just getting rounded rough areas at the right height and then slowly sharpening it up. So it has a lot to do with getting everything on the right plane um, and the right depth. Um, I've got that now and what I've got is brought my edges out so I can lay this thing flat. I want to be able to clamp it onto my pitch board um, so I need to have it contained in that respect. And this will all tighten up here. Um, so I had it to the full depth and now it's flattened out slightly but I'm going to be able to undercut things. Trust me, I think I know what I'm doing. So I'm going to anneal this now, do some more refinement on that but we're getting closer to actually getting to the pitch board and doing that repouche to start getting some real detail into this. All right, just thought I should just mention what I'm doing here. Um, so I've got it roughly shaped. I've got all my uh, highs and lows more or less in place now. I'm gonna start sharpening up the lines. And I've found uh, that before putting the pitch in as a backer, you can do a lot of stuff just by clamping it to a table if you've got it that it's sitting down like this um, and just working into air. And I'm able to then um, push and massage some of the planes better into position and start in with my undercuts. I don't know if that's making sense, but um, I, I can get a lot of that done before I have to resort to putting it on the pitch, which, which involves a few steps to get it set up and then you have to pull it out and, and back and forth. This is a much quicker way of doing that and I find I can do a lot of the initial shaping. So I leave the pitch until the very last um, um, it's a last resort really to get the fine detail in, but if I can get 85, 90% of the detail in this way, so much the better. All right, I'm uh, 12 hours into the whole process, I believe, somewhere around there, and you can see the pieces are starting to come together. There is the right side, the left side, and then currently working on making the back pieces right now. So I've got that. Realizing where they come together at the back, it's one thing to um, get the, the center of it and try to get the planes and the shape and everything like that. But as it goes out towards the edges, there's so much, uh, it's hard to base the landmarks and um, the angles and, and uh, planes that things are going off on. You think you've got it more or less right and then you combine the two pieces together and you realize how very off things are there. So what I've decided to do um, in order to orient myself and get this these shapes actually um, fitting where they need to be, I've decided to make an inner frame for the helmet out of steel. So I've got some 18 gauge here, uh, cut some strips and I'm just going to make a basic frame. Well, I'll show you and then from there I'll be able to piece place the pieces on. Okay, so it's it's done. Isn't this nice? Maybe I should just quit here. I'll just use this. I think people will really like this. So anyway, I've got my frame here. Now what I'm going to do is start positioning my pieces to work onto that. And then I'll know where um, I know, all my orientation points are. So I can start shaping this, getting them closer to their final shape. 
All right, I've lost track how many hours I've been involved in this whole process here. And uh, <laughs> wow, this is, uh, I don't know, tedious. So I'm just trying to get these two pieces to actually fit. Uh, you think you've got the shape when they're individuals, even when you kind of put them together, until you actually try to get them positioned properly um, and you realize how far out of shape they are. They basically look right, but to get all the compound curves working together. Uh, so essentially, I've gotten to this point now where it is more or less where it needs to be, but I'm seeing a lot of anomalies, uh, asymmetries, side to side here. So now I have to go back and refine my um, landmarks, my hollows and stuff like that. Luckily, I hadn't sharpened anything in too much, which is why I don't do it until I really get things positioned. Uh, following this, if I can get this uh, up to, let's say, 80%, then I'm going to move on to the front pieces. So we've got something like this, which will then sit on there uh, like that. Um, and then it will be some endless fitting and trimming to get all these pieces sitting onto my framework. If I can get the four um, quadrants positioned on here, roughly bolted into place, then I can really start refining these shapes and then eventually we can get them welded together using the silicone bronze or TIG welding uh, to make that happen. So still hours and hours and hours. This is going to take a long time. Hang in there. Stay with me. Let's see what happens. All right. So I've spent many hours piecing things together and I came to a very um, sad realization that this was not working very well. Um, the reason being, I wanted to make four panels, make these individual panels. I wanted them to be small enough and uh, flat enough that I could put them on my pitch board that I, so I could do the final detail. That, I knew in the back of my mind, did not seem to be a very good idea. What is more important is getting the overall shape and the front to back, side to side, all that stuff. So after many hours of struggling with that, I realized I could go on with this, but this would take a long, long time to get all these pieces laying in where they need to be. Um, I guess the easiest way I can explain it is like a world map when it's flattened out, you've got a lot of distortion that happens with the, 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 the northern and southern countries where they're stretched out. And, um, when you bring that into a globe, that the shape is much different. So um, it's the same sort of principle in that my landmarks were moving around every time I would bring that in and, and tighten up um, the appropriate shape. The eyes, for example, were moving all over the place. And these eyes are not just like a Lego head where they're just flat on, on the side of the face. They, there's so much um, change in plane and difference uh, curvature that any little bit of change in the angle, the whole thing then became very distorted. So long story short, I threw this one away. And the other day I spent about seven hours and made two half pieces. And I spent the whole day working on those and got them just generally roughed out just to get my landmarks placed in there. Uh, didn't sharpen things up too much because I realized everything is just, every time I move something here, it moves over here. So um, I've got this to a point now where it will actually fit on my head and it's all in the appropriate scale. Everything is working that way. Um, where the crest goes back here, this is my ugly area and it allows me to, everything can kind of just flow into there. So a long battle and kind of uh, eating crow a little bit that my, my first strategy did not work and I, and I certainly know better. That was uh, like a rookie mistake and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm many years into this, I shouldn't have, shouldn't have even bothered with that. I knew that wouldn't work. Uh, to try to have panels here with a seam that would have just been very problematic as I tr got the details and the different changes in plane would have been a nightmare. So anyway, got this. Uh, so for today's filming, rather than watch the next couple hours of me do some shaping here, I'll do a little bit, but I thought do something with a little bit more of a visual payoff and that would be the side pieces here. One second. Okay, so here's my uh, the piece I sculpted out of plasticine. 
and that goes on here locks in there but I'm also realizing as I change and get all this thing nailed down I'm trying to keep this area blurry um, not exactly sure to get the right angle where this is all going to be coming off how this is going to work but anyway I want to get these pieces roughed out uh, get some of that shaping done leaving this area very vague uh, because I'm not sure how they will tie in but I will piece it together as we go this is going to be landing in here somewhere there's going to be cut away um, but that is essentially how things are going to look so taking this i transpose this on its cardboard get a template then i take a piece of bronze and it gets traced out now from here i'm able to start shaping so let's begin All right, so I've got a um, pretty decent level of detail done for the jaw. Uh, now what I need to do, I made this fang quite fat compared to what it's actually going to be. Extra material there, I wanna wrap that around. I'm not sure how well that's gonna work out. So um, this part is actually going forward a bit. So I need to do some notching and then roll that around and see what happens. Not. Nah. let's just get into it.
All right, so much time has elapsed and at long last I've finally got my pieces shaped to the degree that I can start welding them together. Um, just as a uh, you know, general statement as to how things like this work, I, I do these, I started out trying to do this in four pieces for, for the upper part of the, and that was not working because of the complexity of the shape. Um, and then I, I midstream I started again and I did it in two pieces which was much easier to keep control but still even two pieces is hard now I'm trying to do the, the center of the face here um, and everything you do distorts everything else so you can only do the two sides and try to match them up um, and it's kind of a pointless exercise at a certain point and I have to attach them together ideally I would make this out of one piece the problem with that is that you don't have access to the inside it makes it much more complicated with tools and stuff like that the reason why we do things in pieces like that it just makes it easier for the construction of it in the first place not to mention that it's hard to raise a piece of bronze into a bowl that um, tight formed in order to do that in the first place anyway uh, so here we are at the point where now I have to join my two seams together and it's quite critical that they come together here and everything lines up. That's a pretty tricky process. Um, I've got a bolt here and I'm not sure if you can see, um, it's just got a little tab left where they were overlapping. Um, and that allows me to overlap these two pieces, but still have a seam that will actually drop down there. And this is gonna allow me to start tacking this together. So without further ado, let me show you what I mean. Okay, something very exciting for me anyway, is that I have got silicon bronze MIG wire for my little MIG. Um, and I will actually be MIG welding this as opposed to TIG welding. Um, which is the way we typically do stuff like this. Um, I got the TIG welder a few years ago and I taught my right hand man fish or I did I got him to learn how to do the welding. I never actually learned how to use the TIG. I've used TIG welders in the past um, but I never really got up the skills for that so I've always just depended on him to do um, TIG welding when I get to stuff like this which is a fairly awkward process because it's a two hands process um, and it's quite slow. Uh, the I the idea with a MIG is that it's much quicker and you can work with one hand holding and the other hand you can tack. And this is specifically an area where I need to do that because I need to get everything lined up, get things in position with one hand and hold it there because this is not something that I'll, I'm able to clamp. Then come in with a MIG and I can do my tacks. Uh, so with the MIG and the silicon bronze like this on my second lowest or second highest setting, um, I've got enough voltage to be able to burn in there but I have to just do it in stitches if I leave it on for more than a second then it's going to um, overheat and just melt away so it's kind of a tricky thing and they're stitching it in and it is a bit messy um, but it is uh, a lot quicker than doing it with the TIG um, just a little bit more cleanup but it allows me quite a bit of versatility so I'm fairly excited about working with that here we go Okay, so there I've got two tacks. It's now in position there, and now begins the process of me going over to a stake and then aligning each piece and then kind of tacking as I go and moving that around. Here we go. All right, things are actually taking shape now. So I've got um, the fangs are now tacked in place there and I've done some moving around of the facial features. There's still a little bit of distortion to play with there, but I think I'm in the ballpark anyway. 
um, and I can refine that. It's going to get to a certain point where I'm just going to have to say, um, let's move on and and just accept what is. This I have found to be a deceptively tricky shape to do because of the extreme depth um, of the various pieces where a change in depth happens very quickly um, and it's, it's full wrap around like that. Every time I change something in one area, it distorts everything else. And for all these areas to tie together, I've just found this one a really, really tricky build. Um, so quite frustrating, but I'm, I'm happy that it's finally taking shape right now uh, because I'm so intimately connected with this. I see all the mistakes on it, but I think when I take a step back and squint my eyes, it's actually looking fairly cool. It's got fairly good lines. Uh, I'm going to attach the jaw pieces now. Um, I'll bolt them on and let's talk about that then. All right, so bolted together. I can already see a problem here. Let's, let me just try it on though, just for fun. Ah, need some reshaping. So there we have it. I think these are more or less leveled out. The problem I'm seeing is my fangs are coming out that way. They need to come in more. I need to do some shaping. So I think I'm gonna have to take these off and get them brought down before without these things in the way uh, before I attach these permanently. So we're getting close, but still it's just as case in point, um, the distortion on this thing, everything you change just changes so many other things. But there we go. I don't know, how does it look? I can't see, I'm just, uh, I don't have a mirror here, but. Happy Halloween, ladies. Love the Kurgan, great, great villain, by the way. All right, so brought the fangs down a little bit. I think we're much better now. This is really painstaking stuff because everything, it just, it's a moving mess. Um, and it's very fatiguing mentally to try to watch everything um, and stay on top of it. Anyway, I think I'm at the point now where I can weld the jaw pieces in place and then I'm just stuck with it, whatever it is. Um, and I'll be able to do my final um, refining get rid of some distortions and stuff like that then finish off the welding and then lots and lots of grinding and touch up um, to get it to that point but let's uh let's weld these things on see where that takes us okay so these guys are welded into place there is still quite a bit of fiddling i need to do with that to get them all torqued out um, in the proper positioning very fiddly stuff but Lots of grinding, lots of welding yet to do as well. Um, so many, many hours of touch up to get it to that point, but you can basically see the shell there. So I think we'll shut off the camera now and I will go and do that. Before I do that though, I just want to point out, I uh, was looking for the crest thing and I happened to find this in my attic, which is a horse tail. Um, that will be going on there. I don't think it's quite enough and I've got all this extra horse hair, which I'm going to plump up this crest to give it a little bit more volume. So uh, next time you see me, this thing should be finished. All right, let's see how it fits. Holy ground, Highlander. I don't even actually know any of the lines that he says when he's standing there in the scene where uh, before he actually goes and kills the Highlander in the battle. I can't remember any of those, I just remember. Happy Halloween. Ramirez wasn't a feat snob. As I said, the Kurgan, I think, was an excellent villain. Um, that really, he was the best part of that movie, quite simply. I, just, I went back and watched it when I was doing the research for this. Parts of that didn't age so well. You know, it's, it's a very 80s, um, a lot of the, the way the movie's put together. But then in other ways, really good movie, the way it had some really neat 
story effects where they, they would pan back transition between time periods and stuff like that. Um, entertaining, just uh, but a little bit clunky in some of, the, some of the way that it was put together. And Sean Connery being a Spaniard slash Egyptian with a thick Scottish accent, I thought that was a pisser. Really good. Classic Sean there. Anyway. Helmet is done. It came out pretty good. I really, actually, to be serious, um, yeah, quite honest, I struggled with this one quite a bit. This is a very complex shape. Um, started out, started out making my plasticine mold here, um, which, as I got using this, got smashed up, got a little bit derfy at the end there, lost a lot of the sharpness. But at least it gave me a starting point to start with. But even with that, I just found this is a very um, three-dimensional shape uh, in that there's a lot of in and out and it all has to conform. It has to conform to the shape of the head and the size of the head quite specifically, but also the shape out here and a lot of in and out. It's just made for a really tricky build. Um, so, and I, I started out with four pieces trying to do that and I got about eight hours into the thing and I just realized this was going nowhere. Uh, every time you moved a shape here, it distorted everything else to a great degree. So I just found that was very um, inefficient trying to make this, if I were to make that seem would have been too much work for what it was. It was then easier to go to two halves and do it that way. Even that was hard to keep the two halves balanced with symmetry and stuff like that. Again, because every time you try to change one of these shapes, it distorted everything out on the edges. Very much like uh, a world map where you take a globe and then you try to flatten it out into a flat sheet. It doesn't translate um, without a lot of distortion. So that, that was the struggle that I had. Uh, but that aside, it was really a kind of a fun project. I really wanted to do this one ever since I was a teenager and first saw this movie. I've always thought I wanted to build something like this uh, and it worked out quite well and it was the my first use of silicon bronze mig wire which uh, i'll just do a shout out to my friend steve at lindy uh, my local welding supply depot and he was the one who turned me on to this stuff and said give it a try we do um silicon bronze tig welding which is really um quite a versatile thing but with the MIG, what it allowed me to do was be able to hold these awkward pieces with one hand because there wasn't ways to clamp it. And I was able to come in with the MIG and kind of stitch it together. So after I worked out the idiosyncrasies of how um, welding with silicon bronze with the MIG wire, the key is a knurled drive wheel, folks. And maybe I'll actually do a video on that sometime to actually show you uh, my experiences with that. But anyway. Um, really was a game changer for me to be able to stitch this together because I had to um, stitch areas together and then change the shape as I went along and it was just much more uh, quick than using TIG for that and I was able to weld the fangs, roll them out of sheet and, and weld the fangs together and grind and everything. Just gave me a lot of versatility for that. Uh, the thing was then padded with foam and leather on the inside. I happen to have some horse tail uh, kicking around in my armory slash attic and I was able to use that and plump that up with uh, some hairspray and get a nice savage mohawk going on there. So extremely happy with how everything has turned out. I think it's got a nice patina on it. Bronze uh, was really a good flavor for this one I think and you know I just I enjoy working with bronze but I like the actual effect of this which is different than the movie version which was made out of plastic or um, resin or something like that and it was a painted um, thing which had more of a yellow brassy effect to it but it, I like this in the bronze I have deviated from the movie um, shape somewhat anyway as I got into it I realized I was I want I had ideals that I wanted to change the shape anyway, keep it conforming to my head, and this is what I came up with. So, love to hear your feedback on this one. Um, let me know what you think. If you have any questions, there might have been stuff that I didn't talk about or stuff that you didn't see in the video. Uh, leave that down below. So, thumbs up, all that stuff. Uh, check us out on Patreon, and uh, see you in the next video. That's it for now. See ya!